Welcome back, Honey Badger here with HBRV Lifestyle, and today I'm going to debunk the myth that cash is king. I'm going to show you every single reason why you should not pay cash for your next RV, especially if you have decent credit. Now, if you, this is the first time that you have visited this channel, I give you everything from the dealership perspective. Been in the RV business for over 11 years, doing finance, sales, working on them, cleaning them, camping in them. I've done just about everything. So today, I'm simply going to pass some more information on to you. So without ado, let's get started. First thing I got to go over with you is let's go over with the myths. What we were taught as children, what was beaten into our heads from the golden generation to the baby boomers, okay? Cash will give you a better deal. That is a myth. Where that myth came from was in the late 1800s during the Civil War, where this came about was if a general store ran a tab and you had a farmer who couldn't sell all of his crop, what he simply did was say, hey, would you take, give me a, a better cash payment if I gave you my crops? So it wasn't that they gave a better deal, it was they didn't have all the money that they needed in hand to pay the full tab. So they used crops, uh, they used farm animals, they used different things to barter. So it was a barter system where this myth came from. And actually, if you go back to the 1200s in Europe, it was very common practice to barter gold coins, silver, and different types of currency if you paid cash because the exchange rate was different. How they exchanged coins and money was different. So that's where this cash gives you a better deal originated from. Number two, I was taught from a very young age do not make payments on something unless you know you can write a check for it in full. That is something my grandmother beat into me for a long time. Um, unfortunately, it didn't stick, thank God. And I'll explain why in a minute. And then, of course, everybody's favorite phrase, cash is king. It is not. Cash is trash. And I will put a disclaimer at the bottom in the description box below because that's not my original. That's from Grant Cardone. And number four is you pay 4X when you take out a loan. So if you take out a 20-year loan or 30-year loan on a house or on a car or on an RV, you're paying the bank interest. You're paying more for the product than you can make back with your cash. Again, these are all myths. And even though number four, it is in writing, and you can see on the contract of most loans it's in writing that you will pay more, I'm gonna give you the reason why you are not gonna pay more unless you decide to make every single payment for 20 years. So let's get started with what is reality. Let's look at reality. Reality is, no matter how you look at it, no matter how we break it down, it's all cash. Even if you take a loan out, the money is cash going to the dealership or cash going to the private party member selling their trailer, their motor home, their toy hauler privately. So excuse my big butt for a second, but I'm gonna get in the middle here and I'm gonna show you a couple things that, that from a dealership side. So let's look at the dealer. So when you pay all cash for the dealer, you do not get a better price. You actually have no negotiation, none. Now, look at my spelling and my handwriting, I am left-handed. When you pay full cash or you go get your own loan, there is no negotiation on the price. Why? There's three ways that a dealership makes money, okay? The very first way is through the price, okay? The second way a dealer makes money is by a trade-in. And the third way a dealer makes money is through the finance programs. 
So if you come, I'll give you a good example. This is a common practice thing that I hear a lot or have heard a lot over 11 years. I have a trade in, I'm gonna sell on my own because I'm not gonna get enough money from you and I'm gonna pay all cash for my next RV. So you took away the trade in, you took away the finance. Now the guy feels like he has to fly out or drive out 3000 miles away to save 500 bucks because nobody will negotiate the price. Why? Because you only gave them one way to make money. And they have to make all the money on the one item, which is the price. Okay. So that is how cash is not king. It gives you no negotiating power whatsoever. Zero. Now, what does it do for a, a private party? Well, private party, okay, number one, there is only one way they get it, and that's through price. So there's no negotiation on this, obviously, whether you finance or pay cash. But the advantages to you is if the customer owes money, okay? Customer owes money on a toy hauler. And that toy hauler, they are, let's say, they have it with Bank of the West. I'm going to have a BOW as a acronym for Bank of the West. If you go to your own credit union, they actually can pay off the loan and transfer the title into your name. All they need is a payoff and an agreement by the other customer to pay off their loan. So you don't have to finagle trying to pay off their loan. They don't have to finagle playing around with their loan. Simply when you go to your credit union and say, okay, he owns Bank of the West. This is his account information. Uh, this is the coach. This is the guy's ID. Whatever your credit union is going to need, they can deal with all the BS and all the crap that has to do with the payoff. When you pay cash, you have to deal with all that junk. You're looking for somebody that already has the title. And if you're looking for somebody that has something newer and has a title, whew, that's tough because 87%, and I'm sorry if my percentage points backwards, but 87% of the RV business is financed in some way or another, which means that almost nine out of 10 customers are not gonna have the title in their hand when you purchase private party. So that's where cash is not king, cash is a big headache. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna be back and forth into this, so I apologize, but we're gonna do a situation with 50,000. So let's say you save fifty thousand dollars plus you save, let's call it twenty five thousand dollars, or I'm gonna call it expenses. This is mostly geared to full timers, but I want to give it a shot where you can see both sides. So fifty thousand dollar motorhome, okay? Right now, I'll buy you a nineteen ninety nine to a two thousand seven, depending on the level that you're looking at. And the reason why is because you're not really buying a $50,000 motorhome. You're actually buying a $44,000 motorhome. Remember, you gotta pay sales tax and license even if you buy private party. Now, some folks go, I don't need to do that. Well, there's certain states that allow you to get away with that and there's certain states that don't. California, you can't get away with it. Arizona. You can. Well, let's just stick with this just to show an example, okay? So you're really buying a $44,000 motorhome. You're buying a 99 to 2007. You might get lucky, you might find an 08 or 09, but that's the market right now if you're in 2022. All right, so let's look at it. Let's say you go and get a 2015, and that 2015 is $120,000. Now, realistically, if you include, go tax, title, and license, 
it's probably closer to let's call it 135 depending on where you live okay so at hundred and thirty five thousand dollars if you finance that you're gonna get a 2015 to 2016 okay probably something around 15,000 miles now let me show you how this opens up I only want to spend 50 grand great I want you to take only 25 of that grand and put it as a down payment so half so you're going to finance a hundred and ten thousand forgive me if my math is wrong but I believe at 4.49 that's good credit with good credit and good down payment 4.49 with a backwards percentage sign payment should be just around seven hundred dollars at 240 months now if my math's off please let me know in the comments I'm doing that off the top of my head I did not pre-plan this at seven hundred dollars a month you're gonna pay an estimated three hundred dollars in principle every single month Okay, I'm sorry, $300 in interest every single month, okay? So what that leaves you with at the end of the day is a $700 payment and $50,000 in your bank account. Now for folks, let me just use the example again of $5,200 a month income. So would you rather have $700 coming out of this or deplete all of your cash? more than likely one of the reasons why most reasons why people quit RVing is cash flow right so they run out of cash flow they run out of money and they have to sell and then they don't get what they want out of the motorhome right and they're stuck with it it's relative so let me go into what happens in five years in five years you decide I'm either done RVing or I want to sell it and move on to something different okay let me show you what you really spent so in five years if you went to a dealership and said hey I want to get rid of my motorhome I don't want the hassle of doing anything they probably give you somewhere around what's called a half okay so I'm rounding up 75 grand right Okay, now you have your hundred, you have your seven hundred dollars a month, so three hundred times twelve is uh, thirty six hundred a year. So thirty six hundred a year times it by five years, come up with eighteen grand. Okay, so we take the one thirty five. And we're going to subtract it from the 75, okay? And that's going to give you zero, 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 uh, zero, sixty thousand. Add the 18 on top, and then with interest on a 2,000 and 15 or 16, so a 10-year newer coach with a whole lot less miles, whole lot less problems, you spent. $78,000 over five years. And the best part is all it costs you out of your down payment is half of your cash that you set aside. So this is the math that I'm teaching customers or I've been teaching customers for a while that tell me they want to pay cash. Guys, it opens up your options. So let's go over what this does for you. Number one, it gives you a tax deduction. So let's start with some of the pros of doing this system. Okay. When I do this system, we're going to change colors here because changing colors is more fun and keeps you more interested. So what are the advantages? So advantages. Advantage number one is it opens up your options. So now you're not looking for the biggest piece of monkey crap on God's green earth and the best of it. 
No offense to anybody that's watching this that has a 1999 motorhome. It's not meant to be offensive, but let's be real. If you had infinite possibilities to get finance at anything, if if I told you that I could get you a $400,000 motorhome for $200 a month, would you take the 1999 for 50 grand or the brand new coach for 200 a month? It's a no-brainer. People like newer, it's the campgrounds, it's easier to get inside of them. It's easier to find replacement parts for a newer coach. So it opens up your options to find the floor plan that works for you guys. Number two, you're getting a newer unit. So the chances of it having a major problem is less, so less problems. Not saying there's not gonna be, there is always going to be, but we'll just say less problems, okay? Number four is you're gonna have a brand new set of cash flow. Now I'm gonna show that to you in the next segment. I'm gonna make it real quick and simple, okay? And then number five, which is the coolest one, you get a tax deduction. So no matter what you look at or how you look at it, you're gonna end up with more advantages when you actually finance a coach rather than paying cash. Now, here's where I'm going to show you the home equity one. Because I got a question about that the other day. Somebody was telling me that home equity lines are better than RV loans. Well, I'm gonna agree with the interest is better but the actual loan isn't for an RV. Why? Well, let's look at home equity just for a minute. Okay? That's a cool loan. But number one, you lost all of your negotiation on price. And number two, you're putting a depreciating asset. So no price negotiation. Number two, okay, this is important right here. You're putting a depreciating asset into your home. That is a big, big no-no. Okay. And number three, you need to use your home equity to make money. Now I'm gonna give you one example of this. You do not need to follow this. this is, I'm not a financial advisor. But I'm gonna show you an example I gave a customer last year, and they went bonkers. They actually, uh, <laughs> let me show you how they did it, okay? Or, or what they ended up doing, okay? Let's start with the obvious. The obvious is, is that they took $150,000 out of their house. That's what they end up after closing costs and everything, okay? They came in and told me, that they were looking for a fifth wheel and a truck combo for a hundred grand. Now last year, in early 2021, that was very possible, okay? But I explained to them, even though I had the product they were looking for, okay, that's not how they should do it. And they go, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're planning on renting out your house and going full time. They go, yeah. Okay, so let me show you some math. So if you give me, 30,000 of it, go put zero on the truck, okay, with their good credit, they're going to end up with a $1,200 payment on the truck, because they want a brand new dually, okay, and then over in the RV, they were going to have a 550 payment, and they said, that's a lot, all right, so let me show you, so you're now going to take 120, Okay, and you're gonna throw it into a duplex. Now you're gonna have three rental properties. So all three mortgages, we're gonna add up to about $7,500. Okay, they could rent the house out for about four grand. It was a huge, beautiful home. They actually got 4,800 for it. So we'll round up and use five grand. And they ran the duplexes out for three grand a piece, so that's another six thousand dollars. So total eleven grand. Total mortgage was seventy five hundred. B I T I the whole thing. 
So they end up with a plus $3,500 a month income. Now if you take the 1750 and the 3500 you end up with a net 1650 So pretty much at the end of the day, the renters are paying the mortgages on the real estate and for their real estate. So their income, which is about 10 grand a month, they make really good money. Okay. At 10 grand a month, they got an extra 1650 to play, and they have their 10 grand a month, and at the same time, they have their bank account full and they have two investment properties. Well, here's the good news. I just got in touch with them a couple days ago and they now took out two lines of credit. They took out money on the duplex and the home, again, refinanced both of them. They took out 180,000 of total equity and they bought a six apartment building. Six unit apartment complex. They now generate an extra $7,200 a month in income and the wife retired from her job at 43 years old. So only he works. And they're planning on doing it again, probably in a year or two, as long as the market stays up. If not, they'll figure out a way. But that's the way to do it. See, that's where cash is not trash. You're using money to make money. And I know this is not a course on financial, you know, you, you could do it in a money market account. You could do it um, through bonds. I mean, there's tons of ways to build a passive income. And it's better to do that because I'm telling you guys, no matter how many times I say it, I will get slapped for it. But cash is trash. Cash flow is king. So here's my closing statement to you. I'm not here to debate you. I'm, I'm, if I can convert one out of 10 of you to do this, we're gonna have more RVers. And I like having more RVers because it's nice to have campgrounds like Kachuma Lake full and have uh, the highway, Pacific Coast Highway and the Santa Monica Mountains full. It keeps activity going. Um, the more people that keep paying cash for depreciating assets are gonna die broke. And I'm not meaning that in, in a bad way, I'm just saying that that's, if that's your lifestyle, it's your lifestyle, but cash flow, letting the bank take the hit, because here's, a, here's what's interesting. At the end of the day, and I'm, 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 again, I'm not gonna convince all of you, and I'm not here to convince all of you. I'm hoping I reach a small percentage. If I can get two of you in the next three years to do this program, I, I feel like it's a win, okay? But let's say health, remember number five was health was one of the major reasons why no one, why they quit RVing, and then it's cash flow, you know, cash, had cash empty. Okay, maybe job flow, job got cut. Oh, what was the other one? Um, hired. I mean, I, mean, I got a ton of them I can put up here. But health. Let's say your husband or your wife, their health becomes really bad where, you know, you're never going to do this again, right? You got your home, you got your retirement all set up, and somebody's health gets so bad you can't have the motorhome anymore. Give it back to the bank. Right? So what? They're gonna ding your credit for forty-five or fifty thousand dollars. You got everything in a hopefully you'll have everything in a trust where they can't touch it anyway, and this is under your personal. You know? That way you don't empty your bank account. Let them send it to the auction. I mean, let them take the hit. I'm not one to advocate. I'm not advocating you to give it back and repossess it unless there's serious health problems. But if there's serious health problems and you end up in the hospital, right, and you deplete all your cash to 
do this RV thing, where are you going to have money to take care of yourself? So borrow from the bank. You know, I'm going to tell you, use, this is what all the rich people do, use the bank's money. Don't use your own, especially on depreciating assets. I'll give you a great example. I have two cars and I have the ability to pay them both off. But why would I do that? I'm just giving my own hard money away that I could be using to make money. Hopefully this helps some of you out. In the top right hand corner of the end of this video, there's a playlist. And that playlist, if you click on it, is going to have all my finance videos that I've done on RVs. Everything from the basics to fair credit to bad credit. Just click on that and then you'll be able to select the video of your choice if you want to get more information about how RV loans actually work. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully I reached one or two of you. Enjoy, leave me a comment. You can contact me on social media. The uh, uh, contact information course is in the description box below. Happy camping.